Okay, so I ended up putting the overdrive on a come along and dropping it down onto the intermediate shaft. Um, I redid the bolts. They are um, they are seven sixteenth socket. And they are torqued to 25 foot-pounds. Um, in getting the overdrive on to the shaft, we have to make sure the overdrive is lined up on the inside before we uh, close it back up in the shop press. So that was a detail I forgot to mention. But um, if the interior of the overdrive is not aligned, it won't fit all the way down onto the intermediate shaft. So it definitely needs to be aligned before you put the uh, compression back on it and put the snap ring back on it. And so now we have the band in place. I still have to tighten the back rear two bands. I have my clutch packs in place and I've installed my pump and torqued it. Its bolts are torqued to 15 foot pounds and it's a half inch socket. Um, so I'm going to tilt the entire thing back down and do the rear and front band adjustments. Okay, so in doing the rear band adjustment, we are always going to first get the lock nut loose and then using a quarter inch, in this case, socket, tighten the rear band until it's tightened to 72 inch pounds. We want to make sure that the lock nut stays loose, however. Okay, roll it back as far as you need to to keep it loose. Get your torque wrench set up to 72 inch pounds. And tighten this screw until you get your click. Okay, now we're going to get a wrench and we're going to back it off two turns. Some years it's four turns, some years it's three turns. It really matters what your transmission you're working on, how many turns you need for this adjustment. So no matter what, you're going to need to look this up to make sure that you know that you have the correct number of turns for the rear band. Most of them it's four, but this particular year it's two. So then we're going to take a look at our wrench and what it's lining up with. Right now it's lining up with this hole in the case. And I'm going to go back exactly two turns. So one turn that's 180, that's 360 degrees, I'm going to do it a second time. It's 180, that's 360 degrees. Okay, now we're going to hold it with our wrench while we tighten this to 30 foot-pounds. So I'm going to get a crow's foot. I'll be back in a second. So now using my torque wrench, I'm going to tighten the lock nut, but at the same time, I'm going to hold the adjustment screw where it was. So it's partly why I'm using a crow's foot so that I can be sure the adjustment screw does not move on me. Two things get in each other's way. Let's go ahead and move torque wrench back where it needs to be. Keep holding on to the lock nut so that it does not move. Alright, so now my lock nut is torqued at 30 after turning it back two times. Two times is for a 97, possibly some other years. Most of them look like they're something else, but that's what it says for this year. So now we're going to move over to the front band and adjust it. All right, so here we are in the front of the transmission. And to do this one, I'm going to use this square socket that's 5 16ths. It's kind of a special socket. 
um, most of the time you won't have one in your kit. So we're going to take the torque wrench again and making sure the lock nut's out of our way, we're going to tighten the band until it reaches 72 inch pounds. Alright, so we're at 72 inch pounds. Now, our dealer service manual says to back it off three and five eighths turns. So, for most of these transmissions that are 4.2 REs, it's going to be three and five eighths turns, but not for all of them. Definitely look up your exact year of transmission so that you can be certain. I'm gonna look at where my wrench is oriented. It's about in line with, let's see if I can get in line with something in particular. In line with the edge of this hole on this fitting here. So now we're going to back it off the opposite direction. That's one turn right there and then that's two turns right there that's three turns right there so four eighths would be 180 degrees we're going to go 180 degrees and then five eighths would be one more eighth of a rotation backward from there so I'm going to say right about there. -ish. So that's three and five eighths turns. Now I'm going to take the lock nut, twist it into position. I've got a three quarter inch crow's foot. I'm going to attach that to my torque wrench set at 30 foot pounds. The lock nut should be three quarters of an inch. Then I'm going to put the lock nut in such a way that I won't have to move my wrench. Put the crow's foot on it somewhere you think it won't get in your way. I think I'll try the other side. Okay, then I'm going to take my wrench and hold the main adjustment screw in position while turning the lock nut. I might use a smaller extension. Of course, extensions make torque wrenches less effective and less correct. Okay, so still holding the inner screw. Take the torque wrench and the crow's foot until we're at 30 foot pounds. All right, now, so this position is a starting point. If the transmission does not kick down properly, it still may need to be adjusted after tightening the front band. This is where they want you to start. If you still have issues when it gets back in the vehicle, you may need to go into uh, underneath the vehicle and adjust this adjusting it by one quarter of a turn at a time until you get it to behave itself all right we have both of the bands adjusted and we have backed them off one of our next moves is going to be to reinstall the valve body so the valve body um, has this plunger which goes in one of the servos here our accumulators here and we just want to make sure both the springs and the plunger all go back in the way that they came out sometimes there's only one spring sometimes there's two add a little bit of fluid in there so it's not bone dry when it starts and you may have replaced these springs you definitely should have replaced the two phenolic um, washers on the 
on the plunger here. And in the back of the overdrive section over here is the park prawl. And one of our tasks at this point is always to install the park prawl. You can install it by taking it off of the valve body and then reattaching the e-clip. Or you can attempt to take the entire valve body and see if you can push the park prawl into position. Get it in there, it should make a healthy click. And it should stay. Okay, so I use this kind of a light. It's on the end of a little bendy flexy thing. Uh, let me put the light inside there so that I could see where to put the park prowl instead of just guessing. And it appears to finally be in place. You should know that you've gotten it into the right position when you feel something grab when you pull back on it. You heard that loud click. That's usually a pretty good indication that you're in the right spot. Then you can push back on the entire valve body, line back up the electrical connector, line back up the linkage, Like I said, you can put the park prowl in by removing the e-clip and then uh, reattaching it to the valve body. Push the park prowl in first. Sometimes it can be pretty difficult to get the park prowl into place. So I often will put a light down inside the transmission. And then using that light, I'll see how to get the end of the park prowl into position on the little door that it needs to push through. Then doing that, I'll take an extension and knock the park prowl into place from the back end. So that's the back end of it. You can see right there, that little circle. And once I've lined it up, I'm going to take and put an extension on it. And attempt to knock it into place. Using some pliers to push the park crawl over to the location it's needing to be in. If you align it so that you are up against the top of the case, so it's really the bottom of the case, but the top with it flipped over like this, and up against the door, try to take your time, pay attention to how everything is lining up, keep an eye on your, nar on your neutral safety position switch, make sure it looks happy. Don't squish it. If you uninstalled it, you might install it later. If it's still installed fully, it may take putting a little pressure on the park neutral safety switch to get it out of the way. On the little arm here that connects it. And it should be totally disconnected from the park pro. Line up the electrical connector and line up the linkage without too much effort. Should be able to get the whole thing to seat itself 
hopefully right where it's supposed to be. Now I've got the envious task of replacing the E-clip. So this is what I consider one of the hardest tasks in rebuilding this transmission. I needed to do this before pushing the whole unit down. Next, we're going to line up the valve body on the electrical connector. Push that in first. And then the shift linkage. Okay, so we have three different lengths of bolts. You'll see this one right here is one of the shortest length. And then we have two next to it that are longer. There are four bolts on the governor body. They are all the longest length. Then we have two of the smaller bolts here and one of the long-ish bolts here. Make sure the cord isn't caught for the electrical. And all of these are 7 sixteenths. Right, the valve body attaching bolts are to be set to 105 inch pounds. So we're going to take our smaller torque wrench and an adapter. And we're going to set it to 105 inch pounds. Mine has a marking for 110, so I just need to back it off five more. And we say moving in a diagonal. We're going to do this front bolt first. And I'm not actually going to tighten it all the way. I'm going to tighten it most of the way. An extension. Okay, then still moving in a diagonal. I'm going to go diagonal this way. So that's two bolts about three quarters of the way in. I'm going to move this one. And then this friend here. And this one. And this one. This one over here. Mind you, if you see any pieces of lint or junk, be sure to remove them from the transmission. Now's your chance to help keep that filter clear. one. Hi Dindy. Do you need to go back in the house? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm almost done. Come here. Come here. Come here. 
All right. Poor kitty, she's sick of me working on a transmission. All right, so starting back at the first bolt. Mind you, everything we're doing is overcoming this spring on the accumulator. So it can sometimes feel... There we go, that one's torqued. Sometimes feel like we're overdoing it. We'll come out to this edge. And torque this one. Come back here. Torque that one. Okay, and we're going to go back and check them all. Some of them may tighten a little bit more. Some of them might not. All right, now that it's installed, I'm going to take something to move the rooster comb back and forth to try and see if we can move the park prowl. How do you convince me to stop and take a break? <sighs> so, I'm now wondering what you should be saying. All right, so I got the valve body in and torqued and double checked to make sure that the park prowl is all the way in. My linkage moves. And now I'm going to reinstall my Speedo gear. You just go ahead and push this little bugger in like that. And then we will take this little Y yoke here and make sure it's all the way in. And twist this until it lines up with the hole. And then we are going to need a one half inch socket here. So make sure that these two ends of the little Y shaped yoke stay in there. And get this tight. This doesn't need to be overly tightened, just tight enough that it's going to stay put on us. Alright, so there's our speedometer sending unit. Next we're going to come over here and install our transmission oil filter. See there are one, two, three holes there and there's this little half moon shaped guy. He's our main hole. And we'll take the transmission filter and put it like so so that it lines up with those three holes and little half moon guy lines up with the hole in the back. And I'm just going to put these in with hand torques here. They don't got to be incredibly tight, they just got to be tight enough. Tighten these down until they hold the filter in place. Usually make a little divot in it when they do that. That's fine. All right, I've got my reusable gasket in this case, and I'm going to take the transmission oil pan and make sure that any loose material has been removed from the pan. 
And I just recently repainted the outside. It's looking decent. And we can just go around the edge, wipe off any debris. This has been sitting in my cold tank for a while. And we put our transmission pan magnet back in. And line it up with the holes. Looking good. Now we can just go around and start all of our transmission pan bolts. All right, these are a half inch socket. And you can just double check on our torque specs here. All right, so these say to put them at 13 foot-pounds. So that's 156 inch-pounds. So we're going to go ahead and set ourselves up. 140, 
Okay, so that concludes our rebuild process. Next, we're going to reinstall it into the vehicle. It's a 4.2 RE transmission. Again, out of a 1997 Jeep Grand Cherokee. There are quite a bit of details that vary from year to year. Always pay attention. Anything I told you, while it should be correct for this year, might be different on other versions of the 4.2 RE. And as always, like this video and hit subscribe and I can send you some more information from Haas Auto West about how to get greasy. All right, thanks.